Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Earls Hall Baptist Church. My name is Tom, and this is our Wednesday evening devotion. It's Passion Week, and we are thinking tonight about uh, the events of Passion Week, in particular, an event that happens uh, on the Tuesday or the Wednesday of Passion Week. And we're going to be thinking about that in just a few minutes. As we've gathered, shall we just pray together? Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love shown at this time of year in particular as we remember you and all that you have done for us. We pray just now as we meet, as we gather in this way online, that you would watch over us and that you would bless us and help us to understand just a little bit more of who you are, that we may live for you all the more. Amen. We've got a few notices. Our Easter card is being distributed. As we speak, I think the last few ones will be going out. They've gone all around our community. So thank you to everyone who's taken part in doing that. Um, we have the Easter Trail this Saturday, uh, 3rd of April, anytime between 10 and 2. You'd be very welcome to come along and join in with that. There's more information on our website, www.earlshall.com forward slash Easter hyphen trail. Uh, we've got uh, on Sunday, we're having our first hybrid service. Uh, we've been booking people in uh, in our fellowship who have been particularly isolated and who have lacked internet in the past year. And at this stage, having done that, there are spaces available that you can book again on our website. Ooh, let me put the website up there, www.earlshall.com. It's on the front page there. Please be aware that... Uh, if we hit a limit, you'll get an email saying that, unfortunately, you weren't able to book a space, but please do uh, seek to book a space. You should be aware that we're not going to be running any children's or youth groups on a Sunday morning at the moment because of all the restrictions and the guidelines that, that there are. However, starting on Sunday, the 18th of April, there is going to be an online group that Katie will be letting you know more about. So please do look out for that got an update from Tim about the Indian Orphanage. So let me hand over to Tim. Morning everyone. This is a little update on the Indian Orphanage. The orphanage is continuing to function despite the challenges of operating during the global pandemic and the environment of hostility towards Christian organisations in India. This has meant regular inspections from government officials. One of the resulting criteria the orphanage had to meet was the installation of bunk beds for the children. Thanks to some generous donations, all the bunk beds have been purchased and installed now. So that's great news and uh, something to give thanks for. Another new requirement on the orphanage is a new government law, which has meant they have to have a new government monitored bank account. The only way to, keep, to set this up was for Samson and others there to travel to Delhi to set this account up. This trip was an enormous journey and has been successfully undertaken and the procedure is now underway for the new account. There's always an ongoing need to raise funds for the day-to-day -day needs of the children in the orphanage and this is a challenge of course but we are thankful to all those who give to this great work including those from Wesley Baptist, Hadley Baptist and our own fellowship and wider friends and supporters. So please keep the children, Samson and the helpers there in your prayers. Thank you. That's really encouraging, isn't it? To hear that uh, the bunk beds have all been sorted out, that the bank account's been set up and that things are going relatively well, given that there's a global pandemic and that parts of India are being very significantly affected just now. So thanks for that update, Tim going to share the video from Sharon about Kintsugi Hope. Sharon. Hello everyone, I'm here to introduce you to the Kintsugi Hope Wellbeing Group that Ellsworth Baptist Church will be running in April. You will recall Tom introducing us to the Kintsugi Hope Charity that as a church we are partnering with to offer support to our church family and the local community. Well, myself, Andy and Anna Smith and Nigel Milner have completed the training and we're really pleased to be able to lead our first group starting on Thursday the 22nd of April at 8 o'clock. It is a 12-week programme that covers various topics, topics such as self-esteem, 
perfectionism, disappointment and loss, to name a few. It is an opportunity to discuss and explore these topics in a safe and supportive environment. Due to COVID-19, it will initially be delivered online, but hopefully, as soon as we're allowed to, we will be able to offer this programme within the church. If you wish to book yourself on the course, please email me at sharon.scofield at ellshall.com and a registration form will be sent to you via email for you to complete and secure your place on the programme. There are limited spaces, so it will be on a first come, first serve basis. Here is a short video to introduce you to the programme. However, if you have any questions or wish to clarify anything, please drop me an email and leave me your telephone number and I will call you back and we can talk this through. Life is a journey with many bumps along the way and we have all certainly felt the impact of COVID-19 over the past 12 months. So don't feel you're alone. There is support here for you. Thank you. It's uh, great. I'm really excited that we're able to begin to offer Kintsugi Hope as a group. And a thank you to the team for all that they've done in terms of getting things set up and doing all the training that's been necessary. Uh, lo looking forward to that running and really being a real blessing to people in our fellowship and then in the wider community. One more notice. On Friday at 11 o'clock, we have our Facebook service. Uh, this is a Good Friday service and there'll be a few songs of praise and there'll be a short reflection as well but it'd be good for us to be able to meet so Friday at 11 in the morning on Facebook I look forward to seeing you there. It's Holy Week or Passion Week it's the week that we remember the events of a real week nearly 2,000 years ago. The week began with Palm Sunday with shouting and cheering and praising as Jesus entered Jerusalem. Crowds from all over the known world were there to honour God, to remember his salvation of them in the past, their freedom from slavery from Egypt. And as the week goes on, the intention of one of Jesus' followers to betray him becomes crystallised. And we will be thinking a little bit about Judas on Friday as well as the crucifixion. But for just now, I want us to think together about an incident that happened in the middle of this Holy Week, whilst Jesus was eating with his disciples. No, not that meal. Let me play uh, this video from Lumo that introduces it for us. This is Mark 14 verses one to nine. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor, and they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? 
She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you. And you can help them any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Matthew and Mark both record this oddly uncomfortable moment that takes place outside Jerusalem and Bethany. Well, it's uncomfortable for some of the disciples anyway, isn't it? Mark tells us that this anointing of Jesus' head happens in Passion Week. And Mark tells us, building the tension, that the teachers of the law and the chief priests are plotting to kill Jesus. They want him dead. Yet we find Jesus and his followers in pleasant conversation, reclining at the table at the home of Simon the leper. Now, Simon is called Simon the leper, but since he's in a house and he's got company, he must have been healed for here they are in his house, rather than fearing it for him being unclean. And tradition would have pushed that Simon couldn't associate with him if he still had leprosy. So he is certainly healed. Now they're eating together. The company would appear to be in good mood. No fear in the minds of the disciples, despite Mark telling us of the plot to kill Jesus gathering pace. The disciples would have been looking forward to the Passover meal, which is going to take place in just a couple of days' time. And for the disciples, this was a change for their time in Galilee. Here they were in the south, in the capital city, celebrating together. They are excited. And then this less than normal thing happens. A woman comes in with an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She breaks the jar and pours the perfume on his head. We're not told her name. Jesus, however, accepts her presence despite the cultural prohibition of the day for a woman to enter the presence of men when they were eating unless they were a family member. Jesus accepts her presence in the room though. He permits her. She breaks open the jar, pours the perfume on his head and she anoints Jesus' head with this perfume made of this pure nard. This is an expensive bottle of perfume. There's no stopper in it. Once the jar is broken open, it all had to be used. The flowing, fragrant oil fell onto Jesus' hair and scalp. The mood in the room changed. The smell permeated the air, but a bad mood fell on some of the disciples. The perfume could have been sold instead of being broken open and poured on Jesus' head, says one disciple. An accusation of excess in the guise of a care for the wider community. A hard and greedy heart that could not see the wonder of this moment. And so Jesus says, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you're always going to have with you and you, you can help them anytime you want, but you're not going to always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Hmm. While this unnamed woman would probably not have understood that she was anointing Jesus' body in preparation for his burial, she had done a beautiful thing says Jesus. She had taken that which she had that which she had and she had given it to Jesus in this anointing. You know God's economy, how God deals with what is of value is not firstly of wealth, it is of love. She had done what she could to show her love for Jesus and Jesus smelled better as a result and so did the room. The smell was incredibly special. The oil was incredibly special and the choice to anoint Jesus was special. But some of the disciples, and one in particular, saw nothing special in this act. Judas did not like this. But Jesus accepted what had been done to him. He could see the love and the care and the thoughtfulness of the action. She had brought what she had and she had given it away in love. It wasn't about the money or the value. It, it was about what the oil could do. The oil could bless Jesus and that's what she wanted. It was her oil and it was her choice to do this with it. Now for some of the disciples, they could not see 
how what she had done was good. In a way, the disciples were questioning if Jesus was really worth that oil being poured out on him. Yet she knew that he was more than worth it. As we live for Jesus today, do we, like this unnamed woman, know that as we seek to honour and praise and glorify Jesus with our lives, that he is worthy of our everything? There's a well-known advert for a hair care product, not one I have any need for, but the tagline is, because I'm worth it. In this moment, a few days before Jesus' death and his resurrection, this woman can see quite clearly that Jesus is worth it. There is nothing we have that is of more value than Jesus, and there is nothing we have that should stop us from loving Jesus. She knew this. She poured out her oil on his head because he is worth it. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, you are worth everything. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our very lives to be lived for you. Why? Because of who you are and all that you did on earth, all that you continue to do in our lives by your Holy Spirit, for your salvation of us, for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. We thank you for these things, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for joining with us tonight. It's good to see a few people commenting and saying hi. Hi, Betsy and Jess. Hi, Sue and Alan and Christine. Hi, John and Katie and Fiona and Marcia, Ray and Brian. And hi, Christine. It's great to have you join with us tonight. Uh, um, at eight o'clock tonight, we have our prayer time, praying into the future of the life of the church and uh, praying into the timeline for the lockdown um, lockdown restrictions to come to an end. Uh, please do join us at eight o'clock if you're able to. And if not, I will see you on Friday and then on Sunday. Please do take care of yourselves. God bless. Good night. <laughs>